That is a good looking crowd. It gets bigger every year. I think we're going to need to open this wall up next year. Um, oh, shoot. The only thing I forgot, didn't you? I got to get this picture because you know what? We use these pictures every year to count how many people were here and to see how good looking y'all were. <laughs> but you know, one thing I've never done is taking pictures. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now serious business. Um, another thing is the first year I did this, I did regular 12 point font. The next year they said, man, I can't see it. So they said, well, go to 16. So I went to 16. Then they said, I can't see it. So go to 24. So it's at 24. I still can't see it. <laughs> All right, on behalf of the men and women of the Department of Fire and Rescue, I would like to welcome you to the 2018 Awards and Recognition Ceremony. I am Deputy Chief Ted Adams, and I will serve as your Master of Ceremonies. This afternoon, we are going to celebrate the promotion of five lieutenants, three captains, and two battalion chiefs. In addition, we are going to presenting awards for Firefighter of the Year, Paramedic of the Year, Citizen Appreciation Award, Certificate of Appreciation, Certificate of Meritorious Conduct, Certificate of Accommodation, two special presentations, and the Fire Chief's Award of Excellence. This afternoon, we'll also be recognizing and honoring our 2018 retirees and our most recent new hires. Will you please stand and join me as Suffolk Department Fire and Rescue Honor Guard presents the colors and remain standing as Battalion Chief Chuck Knight leads us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. At this time, I'd like to ask Chaplain Alan Lancaster to come up and give the invocation. You know, as I thought about the prayer for today, I realized this is about leadership. So a scripture immediately came to my mind, one that I shared when Chief Rocco was in installed. I'd like to share that with you today because it has so much meaning to it in terms of those who are taking on the responsibility of leadership. And David penned these words when he said, whoever rules fairly over people who rules with respect for God is like the morning light at dawn, like a morning without clouds. He is like sunshine after a rain that makes a grass sprout from the ground. May these words challenge all of us in whatever areas of leadership we find ourselves in that we might be a blessing. So let's pray for those who are. Would you join me in prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we invoke your presence to bless this event as we seek to honor those in promotion. We thank you for those firefighters who have accomplished the skills and study to step to new levels of leadership and for those to be recognized for honorable achievement. May the words of David, your servant, become our desire and all here today who are given the honor of leadership. We pray for your strength and guidance upon all firefighters and families to be successful in your sight. And bless this event, I pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Lancaster. At this time, I would like to recognize our special guest, Councilman Mike Duman, Councilman Roger Fawcett, Councilman Don Goldberg, Councilman Lou Ward, Council City Manager Patrick, I just demoted you. 
<laughs> City Manager Patrick, I promoted you, whichever you. <laughs> City Manager Patrick Roberts, Deputy City Manager Scott Mills, Clerk of the Court Randy Carter, Sheriff E.C. Harris, Commonwealth Attorney Phil Ferguson, Treasurer Ron Williams, Human Resources Director Nancy Olivo, Media and Community Re Relations Director Diana Clink, from Portsmouth Fire and Rescue James, Chief James Hoffler, and from Whale well Volunteer Fire Department Chief Chuck Brothers. Thank you for your attendance today. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, the Vice Mayor just walked in. I'm sorry. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. <laughs> We started at three, four. <laughs> well, thank you for, show, for showing up. We appreciate you being here. It means a lot to have you in the ceremony with us, all of you. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce uh, our new fire chief. He's new to us, and uh, we, we really like him. We, we, you made a great decision, Mr. Roberts. Uh, we just got to keep our hands on him. Um, really good guy. I would like to introduce you, Mike, Mike Baraki. Thank you for a great introduction, uh, Chief Adams. So welcome to the fifth annual Suffolk Fire and Rescue Awards and Recognition Ceremony. Before I address the award recipients and their families, I'd like to thank, take this time to thank city government and our elected officials for supporting Suffolk Fire and Rescue and our mission to serve and protect. So Mayor Johnson is not here today, but thank you to her and council uh, for Chief Adams just uh, identified. Mr. Roberts and your staff, our public safety partners, police, sheriff, and certainly our wonderful emergency communication specialists and 911, because without them, we would not be safe on the streets, so thank you all. Um, we're here to recognize our fire civilians, our firefighters, paramedics, and officers who were promoted, retired, and who demonstrated exceptional and heroic performance over the past year. We are also here to celebrate the citizens and businesses who provided support above and beyond to the community and our fellow citizens. It is true that each member of Suffolk Fire and Rescue who walk across the stage will say the same thing if they're asked why did they sacrifice, perform, or serve above and beyond. They would say what? I was just doing my job, right? It is also true that no one will serve or could do what we do without the support of their family. Please stand if you are a family member of a firefighter, a fire officer, or somebody who's receiving an award to be promoted or, or um, retiree so we can thank you. So please stand up. If you're a family member, a loved one, there we go. For myself and the fellow uh, chief officers that we know that without you and your sacrifice, we couldn't do the job that we do and love, so thank you. What is important to understand, chaplain, a little bit about leadership, is that we inject our firefighters and our officers into situations that are not scripted, easily not mitigated, and very highly dynamic. Each of you makes skillful judgment with decisive importance. Being skillful means what? That you're masters of your art. You continually refine and define the art of firefighting. Judgment defines why human beings are in the fire trucks and why we're in the medic units. Search right, search, search left, enter, don't enter, tube or don't tube. Those are all judgment calls and decisions that define our art. Decisive is defined by the time it takes to make a decision that will save somebody's life. Everyone in this room made skillful judgments in a time period that allowed others to live. That is why it's important to stay relevant in our business, re remain masters of the art of fire and rescue, and to make quality decisions on highly dynamic incident scenes. Thank you and God bless all who serve and protect the citizens and visitors of Suffolk. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Yes, sir. At this time, I'd like to apologize for our mayor, uh, Linda Johnson. She had something come up and couldn't attend. Um, but we got a really good replacement for her. Um, <laughs> I'd like to introduce our, uh, our city manager, Mr. Pat Roberts. Thank you, Chief Adams. Thank you, Chief Adams. I appreciate everyone being here today. As Chief Adams did say, the mayor had made plans to be here and made preparations to give your remarks on behalf of the council and all the employees and all the city. And so I do appreciate the opportunity uh, that she asked me to stand here and extend her regrets that she was uh, detained and could not be here. 
Um, she may still make it late, but couldn't hear, but could not be here for the beginning of the event. And so to that end, I'll just begin by addressing members of council, constitutional officers that are present, uh, family, friends, honored guests, Chaplain Lancaster, Chief Baraki, and all the city personnel. Thank you all for being here to celebrate this tremendous event. I will echo something that Chief Adams said just a few minutes ago about the site standing here looking at this room full of people. Um, it, I know that the fire prevention staff noticed this when we came in. This room holds about 300 people. It's got a little sign on the wall. Some of you look for those things, if not all of you. And that's, 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 it's indicative of something. It's double the size of the capacity of our council chambers where we no, would normally hold an event like this. And so when I'm looking out at this group of folks, and I think about the pictures that Chief Adams just took, if you believe that a picture tells a story, the pictures today tell the story of a community that loves its Department of Fire and Rescue and has a great deal of admiration for the men and women of that department and a deep sense of gratitude for all that you do. So thank you all for being here to celebrate this with us. The event is twofold. First, uh, we will rec recognize a number of people, really accomplishments and achievements, instances of bravery and heroism carried out by men and women of the Department of Fire and Rescue as well as members of our greater community. Another portion of the event is dedicated to uh, several individuals, officers, who have stepped forward and been asked to be given consideration for roles of greater responsibility and leadership. And in all of these instances, I think about what are the thoughts that are inspired and come to mind at these times. I'm not one to often reference literature or ancient history, but I'm kind of on a roll at the cha change of command that we had not long ago. I referenced ancient history, and some folks read into that a little bit. I wasn't calling anybody old. Um, <laughs> But, but I, I canceled my subscription to People Magazine, so I'm stuck with ancient texts and old history books that I'm left with, and so I'm going to stick with, with uh, ancient times to, to share a thought with you. You'll know at the change of command and when we said thank you um, to the outgoing fire chief and congratulations to the ingoing fire chief, I referenced uh, that heroic figure of Cincinnati, and I talked about the embodiment not only of certain figures in the department, but really of service itself, that notion of Cincinnati, somebody who um, made it his business to tend to his home and his family, but when called upon to rush towards danger to defend and protect his community, he did so. And that's a description of everybody in this room today, whether you are a firefighter or somebody who loves and supports one. So thank you. Secondly, uh, I'll move on in that same vein, keeping in the same genre of ancient history, and I'll pull but one line from an ancient text, and that is, the Athenian Oath. I won't share with you the whole thing. I've got a copy of, of it on my wall if you want to come and read it and say the oath with me one day. But the operative line, the thing I think that means the most is the ancient soldiers of Athens concluded that oath by saying that we will transmit this city not lesser but greater than it was transmitted to us. And when you stop and think about all of the actions that we'll recognize today and the leaders that we will thank and congratulate today, we transmit this city not lesser but greater than it was transmitted to us. That doesn't, that is not chiding and that's not sliding anything about the past or anything we did earlier today or yesterday or in days gone by. It is a fierce confidence in who we are today, this city that we've inherited today, and an unwavering optimism about the opportunities that lie ahead and the people who will serve in this department moving forward. So thank you for that. Give everybody a round of applause, please. I just conclude by saying on behalf of all of the employees of the City of Suffolk and on behalf of the City, I thank everybody for their achievements. I wish you success throughout the remainder of this year and I congratulate everyone who's being recognized. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Roberts. At this time I would like to congratulate and welcome our new hires. As I call your name, would you please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Audience, if you would, please hold your applause until the end. That would be appreciated. Nathan Folden, Mark Johnson, Scott Keim, Catherine Mason, William Minga, John Rawlings, Edward Tuck, Francisco Giacino, Stephen Cabell, William Gardner, Joseph Hamilton, Robert Hayes, John Roberts, 
and Carla Sumlin. Thank you and welcome to the Suffolk Fire Rescue family. At this time, we will start with the oath of office. Um, I'll ask Chief Rocky, will you come to the front of the stage? Assisting Chief Rocky today with presentations will be Deputy Chief James Dickens and Deputy Chief Brian Spicer. The Clerk of the Court, Randy Carter, Randolph Carter, will administer the oath of office. <clears throat> Um, okay. your badge pinners can come up promoting battalion chief Wilson will be his wife Heather and promoting a pinning promoting pinning chief Howard will be Eva Eva Howard she is a retired Suffolk firefighter please pin your promotee oh Dimitri or chief Wilson <laughs> chief Wilson's son and daughter also that's a little Dimitri, in case y'all didn't know. Congratulations, Chiefs. You may be seated. Yes. Will the captains please come up? Badge pinners, please come forward and pin your promotee. Pinning Captain Barry is his wife, Crystal Barry. Pinning Captain Boyd is his mother, Velma Felton. 
Pinning Raphael Brown is Chief Mike Baraki. Please pin your promotee. Yeah, if everybody would stay here for pictures, we'll just get a couple pictures snapped and we'll get you out of here. Congratulations, Captains. You may be seated. <laughs> Lieutenants, will you please come to the front? And Badge pinners, please come forward and pin your promotee. Pinning Lieutenant Felton and his wife Erin. Pinning Lieutenant Hodges is his wife Sarah. Pinning Lieutenant Thompson is Dana Thompson. Pinning Jeremy Dr Lieutenant Drake is his wife Corey and his children Brian and Jacob. And pinning Lieutenant Triplett is his wife Mandy and his children. He didn't tell me his children's names, so I can't say them. Number one and number two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Please only pin the uniform. Congratulations, Lieutenants. You may be seated. Yeah. All right, well, congratulations. It is a huge honor to be promoted. Um, so, you know, let's do it one more time. Let's give all of them a round of applause. It's a huge honor to be promoted. All right, we've now come to the awards portion of the ceremony. Will Battalion Chief Dimitri Wilson please come to the front and be recognized. Chief Wilson, oh, hold on now, <laughs> let me read. Chief Wilson is being presented with the Firefighter of the Year, over there, not over here. <laughs> Chief Wilson is being presented with the Firefighter of the Year Award. 
Chief Wilson has been with Suffolk Fire and Rescue since 1999. Since the day he walked in the door, he has been a highly self-motivated professional that strives for excellence in all he does. He was instrumental in getting our technical rescue program off the ground and since being promoted battalion chief, now manages the tech rescue program and is taking the next level. Chief Wilson is dedicated to his profession in this organization. He gladly welcomes any opportunity to serve the citizens of this great city. Who wrote this? <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you, Chief Wilson, for all you do. All right, sit down. <laughs> Will Lieutenant Jeffrey Matthews please come to the front and be recognized? Lieutenant Matthews is being presented with the Paramedic of the Year Award. Lieutenant Jeffrey Matthews has been with Suffolk Fire and Rescue since 2009. Lieutenant Matthew has a positive and uplifting personality. He treats everyone with respect and dignity. He has an amazing work ethic and always smile on his face. Every shift, Lieutenant Matthews can be found at other stations conducting training, checking in on medic crews, or following up with patient care needs. Lieutenant Matthews has a can-do attitude and is a pleasure to be around. And all that stuff's true. That dude never stops smiling. <laughs> Will a representative from Birdsong Peanut please come to the front and be recognized? The Suffolk Department of Fire and Rescue would like to recognize Birdsong Peanut, Peanuts located at 311 Factor Street. During the week of May 1 through May 4, 2017, Birdsong allowed fire department technical rescue teams from throughout Virginia and the surrounding states to utilize one of their main peanut storage silos for the 2017 rescue challenge. The Rescue Challenge is a high-level, multidiscipline training event where rescue teams participate in different complex scenarios throughout a four-day period with limited guidelines and little to no interference. <clears throat> the knowledge and experience gained from these events help rescuers hone their skills and better prepare for incidents they may occur in the future by maintaining the highest degree of preparedness in such event. Birdsong peanuts should be com condem com condemned, commended, <laughs> commended. <laughs> Not condemned. <laughs> Not condemned. Commended for dedicate. Look, I got an hour and 15 minutes to get this done. All right? <laughs> um, for dedicating one of their peanut salads during a very busy production time and being more than accommodating and assisting our members with numerous functions required to make the rescue challenge a success. Thank you for your support of Suffolk Fire and Rescue and the citizens of this great city. Will a representative from Suffolk Department of Public Works please come to the front and be recognized? Okay, I'm going to read it anyway. The Suffolk Department of Fire and Rescue would like to recognize the Department of Public Works located at 800 Carolina Road. During the week of May 1 through May 4, Public Works allowed fire department technical rescue teams throughout Virginia and the surrounding state to utilize their transportation division site for the 2017 Rescue Challenge. Public Works should be commended for not only dedicating their site, but also assisting with setting up the scenarios multiple times throughout the week. Thank you for your support of the fire and rescue and this great city. <laughs> Will a representative from Brinkley's Record Service please come to the front and be recognized? The Suffolk Department of Fire and Rescue would like to recognize Brinkley's Record Service, located at 108 Bill Road during the week of May 1 through May 4, 2017, Brinkley's Record Service provided several vehicles for use in the 2017 Rescue Challenge. Brinkley's Record Service should be commended for not only providing the vehicles utilized in the scenario, but also transporting the vehicles to and from the site, including a large farm tractor, farm tractor which was the focal point of the scenario. Thank you for your support of Suffolk Fire and Rescue and the citizens of this great city. Now, I've been debating all week whether to try to say this, and I'm going to do it anyway. St 
Stacia Waterfield. Would Miss Stacia Waterfield please come to the front and be recognized? Did I say that right? Stasha. I knew I was wrong. <laughs> Stasha. Miss <laughs> um, Waterfield, I'll say Miss Waterfield, is a graduate of Lakeland High School and at the time of the incident was a rising sophomore in college. Used her skills as an AMT obtained from the Prudence Center in an early morning crash that occurred right in front of her while she was operating her vehicle on Wayleville Boulevard. Her first thought was, did I really see what I thought I did? The vehicle involved in the, involved in the wreck had left the roadway and hit a power pole. The vehicle was occupied by a driver and a passenger. Ms. Waterfield was able to get both occupants out of the vehicle and further back into the grass, at which turned out to be a good thing. Minutes later, a track and trailer came by and hit the power lines that had been damaged during the crash, sending sparks everywhere. Suffolk re police retrieved Ms. Waterfield's keys and wallet, but unfortunately, she was unable to drive her car until all the power lines were cleared later that morning. Within eyesight of her residence, she was able to walk home. She said, I feel blessed that I was able to help them. I was the only person on the road besides that car, <clears throat> and if, it were, if I were there, who knows what would have happened. God placed me there because he knew I could help these people. Thank you for your community service. <laughs> Will Randy Vick please come to the front and be recognized? Randy is being presented the Certificate of Appreciation. Randy has been instrumental to the success of Suffolk Fire and Rescue through his involvement with the Local Emergency Planning Committee and his work with the safety officers for Overseas Hospital. Randy's has always been a supporter of Suffolk Fire through his many relationships with our members, ensuring that our department was prepared for any emergency. He was a subject matter expert on anything related to OBC and served as a trusted aide to the incident commander for any calls that occurred there. He oversaw the transition from the old hospital to the new located on Godwin Boulevard and allowed all members to attend the vital pre-incident planning visits. Throughout his distinguished career, Randy truly served the citizens throughout his actions and ensured that our department was prepared through training. His personal connections and worth ethic perfectly matched our department's values, shared accountability, shared responsibility, and shared success. Thank you for your, why are y'all laughing? Thank you for your commitment to the community and Suffolk Fire and Rescue, Randy. Will Trent Pruitt please come to the front and be recognized? Trent is being presented with a certificate of meritorious conduct. In the early morning hours of October 12, 2017, this young man awoke the smell of smoke in his home. He quickly assisted his mother and carried his small niece out of the residence, which was filled with heavy smoke, and escorted them to safety away from the house. Due to a thick blanket of fog, visibility, visibility was difficult. Trent guided Engine 8 to the house, told them all the occupants were out, and that the fire was in the kitchen. The quick actions and calm demeanor of this young man was the reason for the positive outcome to this event. Thank you, Trent, for your bravery. <laughs> Will Kyle Clemente please come to the front and be recognized? Kyle is being presented with a certificate of meritorious conduct. On December 18, 2015, a fire broke out in the garage of the Clemente's home. Upon discovering the fire, Kyle Using training he obtained through the City of Suffolk Department of Fire and Rescue's Junior Firefighter Camp, proceeded to the room directly above the fire to save his younger brother. He then was able to exit the structure safely with his brother and move to a spot in the front yard predetermined by his family. Through his bravery, bravery and selflessness, he protected the well-being of his younger sibling. The ability and willingness to put his own safety in, at risk to save the life of his younger brother and to use the knowledge he gained through his training demonstrates Kyle's true bravery. Thank you for your quick actions and bravery. <laughs> Will Chris Asbell please come to the front and be recognized? Chris is being recognized with a certificate of meritorious conduct. On May 19, 2017, Suffolk Fire and Rescue personnel responded to a rare complex technical rescue incident. A man was cutting a tree and became wedged between the cut portion of the tree and the bottom section, approximately 25 foot above the fire, uh, ground. Firefighters knew that a crane would be required to remove the top section of the tree in order to remove the patient. Chris Asbell was off duty at the time and spoke with Battalion 1 and offered to bring his company's crane to assist. Chris is co-owner of Shale Sheet Metal. He arrived on scene 
Firefighters and Chris coordinated efforts to safely remove the top of the tree to allow the removal of the patient. The efforts of Chris and the crane owned by Shadow Sheet Metal had a direct impact on a positive outcome for this incident. Chris has since retired uh, from fire, Southern Fire and Rescue, but will always be a part of our family. We know that he and his company will always be there to assist our department and our citizens. Thanks, Chris, for a job well done. <laughs> will Dr. Philip Levy please come to the front and be recognized? Dr. Levy is being recognized for his dedication to Suffolk Fire and Rescue. Dr. Levy was the medical director for Suffolk Fire and Rescue for nine years. Suffolk Fire and Rescue operated under Dr. Levy's medical license and the direction for those nine years. Thank you, Dr. Levy, for your EMS guidance and direction over the past nine years. Will retired Chief Ed Bulldog Taylor please come to the front and be recognized? <laughs> Chief Taylor is being recognized. <laughs> Chief Taylor is being recognized for his dedicated service to Suffolk Department of Fire and Rescue. Chief Taylor had been retired from Suffolk Fire and Rescue for about five years uh, when our city manager called and asked him to consider coming back for a short period of time. After checking with his wife, <laughs> and she was the decision maker, um, she agreed and Chief Taylor came back to work, um, put us in a good place where we were, when we were in transition for a fire chief. So my question was this, let me get this right, you were retired, you were out fishing with your Bermuda shorts and your black shoes on, <laughs> and the city manager called and said, hey, do you want all this stress back on you? And you said yes, I immediately questioned his judgment. <laughs> And, and, and he did. Thank you, Chief Taylor. You mean a lot to us. Please come to the front to be recognized. Rick is being presented with a certificate of accommodation. On May 29, 2017, crews responded to a call of a person stuck in a tree. Upon arrival, a man was found pinned in a tree approximately 20 feet above the ground. A crane was needed to lift the tree off the patient. During the lengthy process, fire medic Chris Ward provided patient care from a ground ladder. While keeping the patient calm, he was able to attain an IV to administer fluids, medications if needed. Firefighter Ward uses training in technical rescue and advanced life support to help make this call a success. His professional and calm demeanor during a very unusual circumstance was in keeping with the values and mission of Suffolk Fire Rescue. Thank you, Chris or Rick, for a job well done. Will Andy Kitchen please come to the front to be recognized? Andy is being presented with a certificate of accommodation. During the week of May 1 through May 4, 2017, Master Firefighter Andy Kitchen played an integral role in making the 2017 Rescue Challenge a successful event. <clears throat> Suffolk Fire was tasked with developing two scenarios for the event, and Andy more than willingly accepted the major responsibility of creating one of the scenarios. Master Firefighter Kitchen dedicated countless hours and months of planning on and off duty and developing a very complex scenario that would challenge some of the most highly skilled and experienced rescue technicians throughout the state. And he was also the lead facilitator for one of the events. Thank you, Andy, for a job well done. <laughs> Will Lieutenant Hodges and Cole Hilton please come to the front and be recognized? Lieutenant Hodges and Cole Hilton are being presented with a certificate of accommodation. On the morning of July 23rd, Cole Hilton asked Robert Hodges if he could give him a ride to his vehicle in a repair shop. As they traveled eastbound on 58, Hilton suddenly shouted, pull over, pull over. Hilton quickly explained that he was pretty sure he had seen a car behind some trees in the right side ditch with a person's hands visible through the side glass window. Hilton immediately exited the vehicle and began sprinting back the road towards the accident while simultaneously calling dispatch. 
After arriving at the vehicle, he established communications with the disoriented driver and determined the, the door was pinned shut. We will require the use of extrication tools to get her out. He checked for any immediate hazards and found none. Hilton relayed all information to dispatch and requested the appropriate resources based on his size up. Firefighter Hilton climbed into the back seat, the whole C-spine, and began assessing the patient while Hodges assisted. He comforted the patient by telling her that help was on the way. Gentlemen, thank you for your dedication to the profession and your job. All right. Will Lieutenant Saunders, Todd Helmick, Lucas Weaver, Nick Savage, Cole Hilton, James Schmelling, Dave Devine, Rick Ward, Captain Sweat, Jeff Johnsons, and Michael Joseph, please come to the front to be recognized. These gentlemen are being recognized with a unit citation with a certificate of accommodation. On May 19, 2017, Suffolk Fire and Rescue personnel responded to the accident with the, tr the tree. Uh, a man was cutting down a tree and became wedged between a cut portion of the tree and the section above, approximately 25 feet above the ground. So it's easy to say that, it's hard to imagine. The tree bent like this and the guy got pinned in between there, about 20 foot, foot off the ground. I like to use my hands. Um, the, the crews of Rescue 1, Engine 2, Ladder 3, and Medic 1 had to perform a, a technical rescue like they had never seen before. A crane was brought in to lift a large portion of the tree off the patient. Crews rigged a lowering system for the patient and cut portion of the tree. While performing the rescue, the incident commander made a difficult decision to stop all operations due to a thunderstorm passing over the incident. Frustrating at having to cease operations, immediately refocused on the incident and reviewed their plan to op of operation until they were allowed to continue. Once the tree was removed, the patient was lowered to the ground and transported to the hospital. Thank you, gentlemen, for a job well done. Will Cliff Carr, Sean Moore, Ben Lane, Alvin Lee, William Gardner, and Ronald Smith please come to the front to be recognized. These gentlemen are being presented with a certificate of accommodation, which is a unit citation. On December 29, 2017, fire and rescue were dispatched to a reported structure fire. Additional comments from dispatcher indicated that occupants may be trapped in the burning residence. The crews of Engine 7 and Medic 7 remain focused the tanker assigned to their station was out of service and they s took a spare engine with them with additional water. This has been discussed during their shift before this call was ever received. Engine 7 arrived on scene and reported heavy smoke showing and fire venting from the left rear corner. Engine 7's crew knew that an elderly person lived at the residence and neighbors reported that nobody was seen leaving the structure. They entered the front door in the house and performed a search as they worked on extinguishment. They located the occupant and removed him from the structure. Medic 7 immediately began life-saving effort, efforts while Engine 7 knocked the fire down. The crew of 6 completed all of this prior to the arrival of the next unit 12 minutes later. Unfortunately, the occupant, occupant succumbed to his injuries, but these two crews gave him the best possible chance of survival with a limited number of firefighters. Thank you for a job well done, gentlemen. What's not in that story is it was cold that day. It was freezing cold that day. So they had to fight that as well as everything else they had to endure that day. So thank you guys. Will Captain Eric Matthews, Travis Williford, Robert Barrett, Lieutenant Jeremy Drake, David Legg, Steve Jernigan, Michael D. Turner, William Brown, Douglas Carter, Paul Matson, and Amy Dunn Brown, please come to the front to be recognized. The officers and firefighters are being presented with a certificate of accommodation and its unit citation. On May 28, 2017, Suffolk Fire and Rescue was dispatched to a residential structure fire in the area of East Washington 6th Street. Additional information provided by the dispatcher was there were multiple victims trapped within the structure. Medic 3A, returning from a previous call, arrived on scene first. 
Medic 3 advised heavy fire involvement and a victim was exited the structure on the second floor window and was trapped on the front porch. Without hesitation and under extreme fire conditions, Engine 3, Ladder 3, Rescue 1, and Medic 3A all worked together to make this rescue of this trapped occupant successful. Without the combined efforts and teamwork of these individuals, the outcome for the occupant would have been different. Thank you for your hard work and dedication. Y'all take your time. Will Jason Belair, Rick Ward, Troy Monday, Michael Turner, and Captain Jane Dietz please come to the front to be recognized. These gentlemen are being presented with their certificate of accommodation, a unit citation. The call was dispatched for a man down outside. Engine 4 was first on scene and found a male in cardiac arrest with a bystander performing CPR. They assumed compressions and medic 1 shor arrived shortly after. The male was in full arrest, required ALS protocols and defibrillation. The crew was calm and controlled during the entire event, obtaining 12 leads which showed the patient had a STEMI. They felt it was the best interest of the patient to fly him to Norfolk General. Due to the tenacity of the ALS provider and the, and the fantastic BLS skills of the crew, the male in question was later discharged from the hospital, briefly went to the rehab facility, and is home working in his yard again today. Thank you, gentlemen, for a job well done. Captain Dietz has since retired, so he, he came back to see us. Good job, buddy. <laughs> Will Scott Doctor and Doug Darden please come to the front to be recognized? These gentlemen are being presented the certificate of accommodation and unit citation. On June 25, 2017, the above personnel responded to a citizen who was in cardiac arrest. Crews found the patient with no pulse and no respirations. Due to their efforts in recognizing and treating the patient, prior to transport, the patient had a pulse and was speaking and answering questions upon their arrival at the hospital. The patient was transported with a short hospital stay and then discharged to his house. Great job, guys. Will Daniel Pezzle, Robert Short, Kyle Hale, Blake Jennings, Steve Jernigan, and Teresa Monroe please come to the front to be recognized. These firefighters and officers are being presented the certificate of accommodation and unit citation. On July 27, 2017, the above personnel responded to a citizen who was unresponsive with a weak pulse. Upon arrival, crews quickly moved the patient to the medic for further assessment where they found the patient was hypoglycemic at which time the patient went into cardiac arrest. Crews immediately began providing care. Due to their efforts, the crew was able to restore pulse and furthermore performing a 12 lead diagnosed a STEMI. The difficult yet correct decision to transport the patient to the cath lab at Maryview was decided. This patient was admitted to Maryview and then discharged at a later date. Again, thank you guys for a great job.
<laughs> Will Colt Pulley, Derek Felton, Braxton Sweat, Melanie Gray, and Jeff Matthews please come to the front to be recognized. These firefighters and officers are being presented a cert certificate of accommodation, a unit citation. On June 18, 2017, the above person responded to a citizen who was complaining of shortness of breath. En route, the citizen, en route to the hospital, the citizen collapsed and went into cardiac arrest. And the patient was admitted and eventually discharged to a skilled nursing facility due to the quick efforts of the crew on scene. Great job, guys. Great job. Emmanuel Franco, Matt Alleman, Les Stickles, Corey Stevens, Paul Hilton, and Teresa Moreau, please come to the front to be recognized. These firefighters and officers are being presented with a certificate of accommodation, a unit citation. On September 16, 2017, they res responded to a citizen with the altered mental status. Upon arrival, the crews found the patient pulseless and apneic. Crews immediately began providing care and moved the patient to the medic for transport. Due to the efforts of this crew, we were able to restore a pulse prior to arriving at Obesey. The patient was admitted to Obesey and then discharged to a skilled nursing facility. The efforts of this crew were instrumental in saving the life. Thank you for a job well done. Will Philip Thompson, Richard Turner, Nate Boyd, John Oliver, Chris Posios, and David English please come to the front and be recognized. These fires, fighters and officers are being presented a certificate of accommodation, a unit citation. On August 14, 2017, the above personnel responded to a citizen who was unresponsive. Crews found a patient who was in hospice and with no D D DNR surrounded by family. Crews assessed the patient, and during assessment of the patient, went, the patient went into cardiac arrest. After the crews moved the patient to the ambulance, the patient lost pulse and stopped breathing. Through their actions, the crew was able to restore a pulse prior to arriving at Obesey. The patient was admitted to Obesey and discharged to his residence. Thank you for a great job. Will Brian Grasser, Mark Johnson, David Bell, Stephen Spate, Brandon Williamson, Brian Moody, Teresa Monroe, and Nathan Folden please come to the front to be recognized. These firefighters and officers are being presented with certificate of accommodation and unit citation. December 27, 2017, the above personnel responded to a citizen who was complaining of difficulty breathing. Upon arrival, crews found the patient pulseless and apneic. Crews immediately began providing care while also working with the family who was upset about the situation. Due to their efforts, the crew were able to restore a pulse in the residence. Once they obtained a pulse, they quickly moved the patient to the medic for transport to Obesey. The patient, the patient was admitted to Obesey and then discharged to a skilled nursing facility. Thank you for a great job, guys.
Will Brian Moody, Trevor Duke, Braxton Sweat, John Carr, Ricky Blake, and Dustin Heimer please come to the front to be recognized. These firefighters and officers are being presented the certificate of accommodation, a unit citation. On June, 2000, June 27, 2017, the above personnel responded to a citizen who was in cardiac arrest at a diocese center. CPR was started by the staff prior to arrival. The, cr the crews delivered care and were able to restore a pulse upon arrival at Obasi. The patient was admitted to OBC and then dis discharged to a skilled nursing facility. Thank you for a job well done, guys. like to ask Chief Baraki to come to the podium for a presentation of the Fire Chief's Award of Excellence. Thank you, uh, Chief Adams. So, about a month on the job and I have the distinct honor and privilege to present this award. So, uh, I'll try to stay on script. If I get off script, it's okay because it's from the heart. So. The Fire Chief's Award of Excellence is presented each year to a member of the Suffolk Fire and Rescue family in recognition of their continued dedication, perseverance, professionalism, and commitment to the values, goals, and success of the Department of Fire and Rescue. All personnel of the department, sworn and civilian, are eligible for consideration. This year's Chief's Award is presented to a, civil, a civilian member of our family who has been instrumental in the successes and daily operations of Suffolk Fire and Rescue for many, many years. This employee is known for the offering of friendly reception to others, kind words of encouragement, and impeccable attention to detail, which I certainly value, a strong desire for things to be done right, that's in quotation, and the ability to keep things in order for the good of the city and the department. Um, at this time, I'd like to ask Ms. Martha Wheeler to please come forward. Martha, I have three more pages to go. <laughs> if, you, if you would accept your award and look at Mr. Boat and the uh, photographers, I will uh, continue to read. We affectionately know Martha as Miss Martha, right? Um, she's been described as, quote, the glue that keeps the department together. Mr. Roberts, please understand that next time you do my eval. Uh, everyone knows if you need something, quote, see Miss Martha. Uh, Miss Martha, you joined the city of Suffolk in 1982. 1982. <laughs> she joined Fire Rescue in 1991. Since that time, she has been faithfully serving as the executive secretary to four fire chiefs and two interim fire chiefs. Her professionalism, execution of her duties, and then simply serving as an example for others through her conduct and con uh, contributed directly to the successes of the organization in the city. It is my honor and my pleasure to read my first Chief's Excellent Award to recognize Martha uh, Wheeler for her service. Thank you. Got you, didn't we, Martha? <laughs> you deserve it. I forgot where I was. 
All right, at this time, uh, Suffolk Fire Department Fire and Rescue would like to recognize and honor the 2017 retirees. Will retired Lieutenant Richard Deans, would you please come to the front to be recognized? Will retired Master Firefighter Martina Campbell, would you please come to the front to be recognized? Retired senior firefighter David Legg, would you please come to the front to be recognized? Well, let's give him a hand. I don't think it's good. <laughs> I would now like to ask that all retirees from Suffolk Fire and Rescue please stand today to be recognized. I know you're out there. There you go. It's good seeing y'all. Billy, Mike, Chief Nichols, Chief Burr. Um, thank you for your service to the, the department and the community. I miss you guys. Wish y'all come around more. Um, I'm stalling now because Pam's at the back going, slow down, slow down. Um, I would now like to ask Chaplain Lancaster if you would come up and give the benediction. You can see why I'm so honored to be the chaplain for such a fine bunch of men and women who serve our city. It's always a joy for me to be able to lift him before the Lord. I said one time, my turnout gear, the only place my turnout gear should get dirty, and by the way, it looks like he just came out of the store, should be my knees. Because if anything I should be doing all the time is praying for such people. So let me close in prayer today as we thank the Lord. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we close out this service, I pray that we would be reminded of your word that declares everything in heaven and on earth belongs to you. You are the ruler over everything. Riches and honor come from you. You rule everything. You have the power and strength to make anyone great and strong. And now, our God, we thank you and we praise your glorious name. Help all firefighters and families who give much to serve that you're with them on the coldest and darkest night to the hot and most challenging days. And bless them all, I pray, these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Lancaster. Well, that concludes our ceremony for the day. Um, I just want to say I, I really appreciate you all coming here. You don't know how far we've come, and some of you may, but we really started out with a handful of people coming to these things to the point now where we're, we've outgrown this room. I mean, it's great to see, and hopefully we do outgrow this room one day. So I, I appreciate all of you being here. Um, it's, it's a great time to be in Suffolk. It's a great time to be a Suffolk firefighter. We got, you know, huh? Yes. Um, it's a great time. He always got something to say when I'm trying to talk. Um, it's, a, <laughs> it's just a great time. We got new leadership, um, bringing in some fresh ideas, and, and we appreciate you did a great job of picking him. Um, Chief wants to speak one more time, and he's going to lead us out of here. I just want to let you know that 
Um, we, we got some really good food next door, and it's not your typical dry cookies and lemonade. It's actually good food. <laughs> so please don't leave until you come over and eat with us, but I'm, I'm going to end my ceremony here. Chief's going to get up and speak, and when he's done, he'll dismiss us all. It's important for me to, to, to have this opportunity to say thank you to, to certain people because it is a beautiful ceremony and this doesn't happen uh, because we just, you know, click our fingers and just say make it happen. So um, thank you for a wonderful ceremony. I want to thank the awards uh, ceremony committee for their hard work and dedication. So I want these uh, members to stand up and we'll hold our applause so they all stand up. Deputy Chief Spicer, Dickens and Adams, please stand up. Uh, Martha Wheeler, uh, did you step out maybe to help out next door with Martha? Uh, Richard Stevens, uh, if he's in here, Pam King, and Chief Taylor. Everybody, uh, please give them a round of applause for what they did this evening. Uh, again, thank you, uh, Diana, and your team. Uh, without you, obviously, we couldn't make this happen. So thank you from city staff and Diana, um, the AV, pictures and videos. Uh, tugboat, thank you. Finally. The Hilton Garden Inn, if any of the family or uh, friends from Hilton Garden Inn is in here, thank you for your support. Um, as I conclude, we're here to recognize the accomplishments and the members of Suffolk Fire and Rescue and its citizens and business partners. It is without question to highlight for the mayor, council members that are all here, thank you guys, uh, city staff, uh, Pat and your staff, thank you, and the senior leadership team from Suffolk Fire Rescue to let your family see what you do. It's what we do. We know at the firehouse uh, table having a cup of coffee, we just do it because we love it but your families need to know what we do. So please continue to serve with pride and honor and God bless Suffolk Fire and Rescue.